guys and welcome to a new video on Sonal's life. So, the last videos was the whirlwind that was Wrestle Kingdom and not even, well I guess, a week and a half later we had yet another massive show but this time in America with New Japan Strong's Battle in the Valley. Now, I'm going to be honest, when these Strong shows started the Strong brand I was not a fan. However, it seems that since New Japan has really, I guess, cut down the amount of shows they've had in America the quality is much higher and exactly the same for this show. So I'm going to go through all the matches, the results and there are some very interesting matches planned ahead. So let's get going. So I didn't actually watch the pre-card, um, the pre-show card, but um, yeah, it's apparently very good. So we saw um, Matt Vandergriff beat Goldie and Stephanie Vaquer beat Viva Van. Now I will definitely go back and watch it, but obviously um, I'm watching this on the Sunday morning because it was in the middle of the night and I wanted to get this review out for you quickly. So we started off with a six man tag match. So we had Team Filthy, so Team Lola, Royce Isaacs and Jarrell Nelson versus the team of Jake Fatu, Fred Rossa and our boy show to Umano. Again, there wasn't really much like in terms of storyline going forward in the match itself. It was a very good match. Um, unsurprisingly, Shota got the win. Like I said, they're really building him up as a top guy. And that will include giving him, albeit not massive matches, but giving him wins within different brands in different countries. But however, the big thing after this match was when the match had finished, Jack Perry, aka Jungle Boy from AEW actually came to the ring, beat Shota up and then ripped up his own AEW contract. Now. I will not be I will not lie to you and say I know what is going on in AEW. I know that there has been some shit going down with Jack Perry. This dates to like CM Punk stuff and a lot of controversy over I think his attitude and things towards his um senior wrestlers. But it will be interesting to see how they do it. Um I think maybe they're about a similar age. But I guess like in terms of I like, think they're quite low down in the seniority. So it'll be interesting to see what New Japan does going forward with Shota and Jack Perry. We then had a two on two man match. And what I like is it has like the CMLL vibe. So on one team we had Mascara Dorado versus Volador Jr. Versus Soberano Jr. and Rocky Romero. Now what's quite funny, so we all we know all four men. Obviously, Rocky is a mainstay in New Japan. The other three we have seen in CMLL shows. Well, I think so. Mascara Dorado doesn't have a picture, so I think maybe we've only seen him on strong shows. But yeah, what was interesting, because Soberano Jr., if you remember, at the end of Super Junior Tag League, basically turned on his partner and had a heel twist. So it's quite funny that he's teaming with Rocky, because Rocky has been a heel in the past. He is, he's the king of sneaky stars, so even as a babyface, he is not afraid to play dirty. So it was quite interesting seeing the dynamic here. It's always great to see Volador Jr. He is goddamn handsome as hell. So yeah, with four, I guess, so three luchadors and then obviously Rocky Romero, it was a really fast paced match. Uh, in the end, Volador got the win over Rocky, which is interesting because so in the past, Volador Jr. has been in the best of Super Junior and I think Super Junior Tag League. But like with his weight and stuff, I definitely think now he's counted as a heavyweight, so it makes sense for Rocky to get pinned. However, I love seeing Rocky in these strong shows, he's on AEW, but Rocky, come back to New Japan, he was amazing on commentary for Wrestle Kingdom. But we just want to see wrestle again, Rocky. We then had a special singles match. This was interesting, it was a junior heavyweight versus a heavy heavyweight. So it was David Finley versus TJP. So Bullet Club War Dogs versus The Empire. And remember, this is all leading up to the steel cage match that is going to happen during the New Beginning tour with The Empire facing Bullet Club War Dogs, which obviously is all stemmed from like the feuds between the different wrestlers. Now, this was a really good match. Now, it wasn't surprising that Finley got the win, not just because he's a heavyweight, but he is the current IWGP Global Champion. I think I got that name right. But it was really strong. So TJP, I will never stop singing his praises. Such a phenomenal wrestler. Not only because for a junior, he is extremely diverse after having decades of experience. He can go high flying, but he's also very much known as submission specialist. And Finley in this match, again, Finley's a very good wrestler, but he is really upping the heel antic. 
And I like that because he's getting genuine heat from these US fans. Not like, I hate you heat, but like, oh shit, he is a heel heat. So I think that worked. It was a really nice um, breakup from the tag matches. And I like seeing when they have juniors versus heavyweights because once upon a time, there was very distinct differences between the weight classes. And now it feels like we're seeing that less and less, especially with the likes of the never open weight division getting stronger, but also like seeing the change between people going from division to division. We then had a nice title match. You know what? I always think these strong shows really work because there's a nice mix of singles, tags, and we have a title. We had actually two. So this was the first title match on the card. And it was the newly crowned double champions. So the tag titles, so the strong openweight tag titles and the IWGP heavyweight tag titles. The champions, Hikaleo and ELP, were defending against, actually, so this is quite interesting, Alex Coglin and Clark Connors. Now, before you say anything like, oh, Clark is a junior. So, Hikaleo and ELP were only defending their strong openweight tag championships. Remember, openweight, which means that both heavyweights and juniors can do it. Now, it's a very new pairing. So, we're used to seeing Coglin with um, Gabe Kidd, who had a match later on. And we're used to seeing um, Clark Connors with Dan Maloney. Now, this was a really great match. Despite Connors being the junior, he really held his own. And what I love, and I said this, not just because like when ELP came out, he did one of the hearts, well, his own take on one of the hearts that I taught him during the interview, but really the team of ELP and Hikaleo have really captured the hearts of audiences. Hikaleo was here, this like, he probably was never the most popular wrestler, but during this match, there were chants Hikaleo, and I loved seeing that. Similarly, War Dogs really upped up the heel and kick, similar to what Finley did. But what I love about War Dogs, and this is very different to House of Torture, is that they are still extremely good wrestlers. Coglin has this unhinged aura to himself, but Connors is pure strength, pure speed. Like, since becoming a heel, nothing has been impacted in his wrestling. And similarly, on the other side, you have Hikaleo and ELP continuously growing on their tag team offense using that difference in styles so obviously Hikaleo's height and power with ELP's agility and charisma honestly a really good match like phenomenal and I like that I think they're really going to continue pushing the strong and the IWGP tag championships being separate rather than like merging them together which is what I thought they would do initially we then had a women's match. And again, it's always nice in these New Japan Strong shows to have women on it. And it was another title match. Completely like, I was trying to go through the title matches, but yeah. So this next one was the IWGP, no, sorry. The Strong Women's Ch Championship match. And it was Julia, who is on her eighth defense. Which by the way, can I say is phenomenal. She has been an amazing champion. Versus Trish Adora. So while I have watched Julia, and I think she is phenomenal. I have never seen Trish Adora and actually this match was amazing. It only got 13 minutes and I sort of think this is one of the reasons I have this big like debate of like why the IWGP Women's Championship is better in stardom because amongst this massive card the women's match was placed within the middle and I think it had 13 minutes which was phenomenal it could have got a lot more. The crowd was loving this match both women are so athletic and so phenomenal and I really think that it added a different pace to the rest of the matches. Both women had the crowd on their feet. They were giving us speed, power, agility. And what I like is that, like, strong audiences, New Japan audiences like me who don't normally watch, like, stardom or see these independent wrestlers, really get to see them shine. And I really hope that Trisha Dora, actually, we get to see her more because she put on an amazing show. We then had a tag team match. So going into this match, it was very mysterious. So you had Zack Sabre Jr. and Bad Guy Tito of TMDK facing Matt Riddle and X. Now, at first I was shocked because Matt Riddle's partner was Jeff Cobb. Now, there have been rumblings going around like, oh, Matt Riddle's going to take over the United Empire. And I thought, that is not going to happen. But this makes it seem more likely. And at first, when I thought it was a weird pairing, I actually saw on social media that Riddle and Cobb have wrestled together as a tag team in the past. So I quite like that. And you know what? Despite, obviously, there being, like, four very different wrestlers, 
they all had time to shine and i want to give a shout out to it was tom lola vader scott and obviously walker stewart on commentary giving each man the praise they deserve in particular bad guy tito could easily have been left out of the mix especially with three such big and very popular stars like Zack Sabre Jr. been in New Japan for ages. Jeff Cobb is a massive favourite. And obviously the big debut of Matt Riddle. But they really pushed this bad guy Tito. Especially Tom Lawler who said he faced Tito in multiple G1 warm-up matches. And said he's a completely different breed. And again, there were so many different interactions. You've got the big man Jeff Cobb who was matching the power of Tito. And then the two more submission based specialist so matt riddle and zach i still don't know how i feel about watching matt riddle in a new japan ring <sighs> um per personal controversies aside i kind of get an ick when i watch him i don't know if anyone else feels it let me know hopefully like whatever happens in the future is all done well like whether he beats hiroshi tanahashi at the new beginning whether he does end up in united empire i just with his past, I want Matt Riddle to respect what New Japan is. Respect the New Japan wrestlers, respect the New Japan fans, and most of all, and you'll know what I'm talking about if you know his history, respect Japan as a country. So we'll see. Uh, in the end, the team of Jeff Cobb and Matt Riddle got the win over bad guy Tito, which I guess was expected. A great match, but we'll have to see the future of Matt Riddle in New Japan. We then had three singles matches, so one title match. So we started with Eddie Kingston versus Gabriel Kidd for the AEW Continental Crown. So that's when they combined like three different belts, including the strong open weight, which is why I was like, oh, I thought they were maybe going to get rid of the strong belts, the tag belts, but it wasn't. Completely unhinged. From start to beginning, it ended in a double countdown, which is very true of both men. Eddie Kingston, so when he came into New Japan, I wasn't really sure what to expect from him. But he is literally such a bundle of joy. Not just because when I met him, but when he's in the ring, he seems to be someone who genuinely, like many of the other stars that come to New Japan, love the country, love the company, and love the fans. And this match was like full on from start to end. Gabriel Kidd came out and obviously the match died before the bell. They beat each other up. Then during it, considering the much bigger size of Eddie Kingston, Gabriel Kidd used his craziness to balance that out and really make it, make it a much more even footing. Because remember, you know what, Gabriel Kidd is young. However, he has been in this industry for so long. He was winning titles in his teens here in the UK. So I'm glad that he is finally getting the chance to shine. But with a count out, I always wonder, is this going to cement another shot for Gabriel Kidd? Because technically he didn't lose, he didn't win. But he didn't lose either. From one crazy ass match to the next. It was one that everyone has been waiting for. The no disqualification match between John Moxley and Shingo Takagi. Now this is very new territory for Shingo. You could tell he was mean in business. He came out in skinny blue jeans. Which I can, can I say? Really suits him. If you want to do that again Shingo please go ahead. Now I'm not really a fan of death matches normally. You know this. However, it's in recently, Moxley, especially paired with um, New Japan stars, his no DQ matches have actually been much more enjoyable to watch. There was blood, a lot of it. And what was quite interesting was um, Shingo almost started the no DQ stipulation, bringing out kendo sticks. When was the last time you saw Shingo with any weapon? Because obviously he doesn't need it. But it worked throughout this. So obviously Moxley split the kendo stick and was sticking it in Shingo. We had chairs, a chain. I mean, at one point, um, Shingo did a pumping bomber with the chain. We had tables, which the crowd... <laughs> About like five minutes into the match, I think the crowd spent like 15 minutes chanting for tables until they came out. And what I love is that both Moxley and Shingo are amazing wrestlers in their own right. They are loved by the New Japan fans because they are powerful. They are charismatic in the ring. And that's really what helped this. Moxie didn't go in with, oh, I have an advantage in these kind of matches. I'm just going to let it slide. Shingo didn't go into this match thinking, I'm not really known for my no DQ, so I'm going to try and keep it New Japan. They really put their hearts and souls into this match and their bodies. Like by the end of it, there was blood on the ring. Shingo was wearing a white tank top. Again, a really nice addition, Shingo, where there was blood on it. 
there was so much chaos going on inside and outside the ring and yeah this is what i mean like i don't really like this kind of matches normally but in moderation and with the right people i think it works so when moxie does death matches over here sometimes i'm not a fan but when he balances it with someone who maybe isn't as known for their no dq premises so for example shingo now and at king of pro wrestling we had great okan when they went out into the audience i think it really works in the end moxley got the win not surprising because as good as shingo is again it's not his forte however the big thing was and i actually forgot to mention earlier in the show there was a vt where mustafa ali you know wwe star one of the first wrestlers that i was obsessed with getting into wrestling he challenged hiromu for a special match at um windy storm rush <laughs> name that wrong but yeah a match there so when moxley beat shingo he now challenged tetsuya naito for a match at that same event however it is for the iwgp heavyweight title now i'm kind of worried for naito's safety here but i think it's going to be an amazing match and talking of amazing matches we ended on a historic, a memorable, and a quite emotional match. So we all know that Osprey will be leaving us at the end of next month, I think. He'll be going to AW. And there is one man that he has faced many times, but I think was the perfect person to have his final New Japan show in America with, and that was against Kazuchika Okada. Now, for any of you who might be new to New Japan, Kazushika Okada wrestled Osprey in Rev Pro and brought a younger British wrestler to Chaos to become a part of the New Japan roster. And for many years, they were like older brother and little brother. They had so many fun interactions. They worked while you had the top of the heavyweight division in Okada and the top of the junior division in Osprey. And it just worked. Which meant that people were very shocked when Osprey eventually turned on Okada and um created the united empire now this match i don't know if it's as good as their other matches there was a lot more emotion in this and again we've seen osprey has put on match of the year contenders last year probably for most people the wrestler of the year and okada had a very different year so while osprey was with big titles big matches okada flew a bit more under the radar he was really focusing on the never six-man titles beating up young kids and had this newfound aggression to him and a bit of like he was like i don't give a fuck and this was brought into his match with osprey so while at first the crowds were split okada channeled his inner heel he was like flipping off the crowds he was like digging into osprey a bit longer than red shoes his count just to get that heat and i guess in a way to make osprey seem like a really big baby face for his last show it was as you can expect, an amazing match from start to end. There was so much speed. So we saw them going out the outside. Um, Okada hit some of his classic moves. So the DDT on the outside. We saw drop kicks, lariats, um, Kawada kicks from Osprey. And while as time went on, there was a newfound like determination from both men. They were like, okay, this might be the last time we wrestle each other in well forever maybe but this will be the last time we wrestle each other as new japan stars and they put their hearts into it so osprey was trying to hit a rainmaker okada hit a beautiful stormbreaker you know the stormbreaker that osprey has used to win many matches and if anyone wants to know was named by jy after they watched an avengers film again a little tip that i like to put out there and it just as i watched it i got emotional because albeit i have not watched new japan since osprey started in new japan but i watched him while he was at his prime i watched him with chaos then him leaving okada then making his way from the top of the junior division to one of the best wrestlers in the world and so it meant that when okada got the win which i think had to be the case which albeit a bit surprising with a rainmaker after a failed rainmaker i just the way that both men embraced in the ring just meant that you know what wrestling is entertainment but it's a family and while i guess in kayfabe uh, carter and osprey have had their past rivalries and obviously there's been interference in some of the matches and things at the end of the day could any of this happen if a kazuchika okada hadn't have brought a young will osprey to new japan all those years ago 
we couldn't ever know. And as Osprey took to a very took the mic in a very emotional match. What I quite like though is that they brought in some story going forward as the house not the house of torture. Oh I'm sorry, I'm sorry. As the war dogs came and attacked Will Osprey ahead of their cage match. Jeff Cobb and TJP came out with Eddie Kingston and obviously shooed them away. But again, I like that even in the emotions of his final match, they still found a way to promote the upcoming show, which was nice. And then Osprey did a really heartwarming promotion, saying that America was basically going to be his home, but also saying he didn't have enough words for Okada and that like he'd say them in the post-match comments. So yeah. These, this strong show, I think, was one of the best. There were some amazing matches, some amazing names, some very good storylines going forward. So let me know what you guys thought. What did you think of the match in general? Was there any that stood out? What did you think of, I guess, Okada versus Osprey, the final chapter? Let me know in the comments below. As always, let me know on social media at wrestling underscore chat. Hit like, share this video with friends, and remember to hit subscribe. We are now fully in 2024 and the year of New Japan seems just as good. So yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. You enjoyed the show as much as I did and I will see you guys soon. Bye!